Concept cars typically don't happen, like, ever. A year ago, I made a video about this and talked about things like the FT1, which was originally the Toyota Super Concept, and it did not end up really being that car at all. I mean, the headlights were kind of similar and the taillights were kind of similar, but it was like they took it and then they shrunk it all the way down. Not really quite the expectation versus reality we wanted. However, there are some concept cars like the BMW i8 that got very close to the visual reference of the concept car, but it's, you know, it's not everybody's favorite looking car and I don't know how well it's aged, by the way. Uh, how do you guys think the IA is age? Put it down in the comment section below. Concept cars are essentially the practice round for designers, for the big leagues. To see if ideas are really even feasible or practical or could they even be put in production through a plant? Could you get the logistics of the materials and the design language and the UI? All these things that are very important. But typically, like I said, they're practice rounds. They usually don't really go anywhere after the lesson has been learned. If you'd like to support this channel, by the way, real quick, head over to pattersoncarcare.com. We're having a 35% blowout sale at the end of summer using the code SAVEBIG. Original formulas, super easy to use, and this will be our last big sale for a while, so definitely make sure to check it out. But Hyundai has truly been on the up and up the past about five years or so. Even with things like the Ionic 5N, which is an EV, that pretends to be a combustion car that uses a gearbox that has fake gears in it, yet got incredible reviews. I mean, like almost everybody that I know in the industry said the car was phenomenal, which is a really good sign that we can kind of combine the old and the new and it can actually be convincing. I also worked with Hyundai a couple years ago and I had no idea just how successful Hyundai was at racing. Their TCR class, they had won like four years in a row and I had no idea. So Hyundai, is getting a better reputation. It used to be the literal laughing stock of the car industry. It was the car company that if you didn't have a lot of money, but you just needed to get around. <laughs> You're like, beggars can't be choosers. It was a cheap car, it got you around until it did it anymore. <laughs> but if you were to ask me about Hyundai today, Hyundai is almost like a machine learning AI that learns from its mistakes and then just gets better and better every single year. And feedback online, they listen to people. They take online feedback very seriously, it seems. So that's why we're here today, online feedback. Man, it's been a long journey since the Hyundai Tiburon, am I right? Man, that car like looked way cooler than it ever needed to be. I was always so disappointed how slow it was. I actually wanted one as my first car, believe it or not, because of Need for Speed Underground. Uh, how different of a life I would have had. Okay, so that's kind of a recap on the Hyundai brand. We're here to talk about the Envision 74, a car that has been rumored to be greenlit again. Last year, it was rumored to be greenlit, but it seems much more promising nowadays. In fact, with even a goal of 2026 to deliver this car. And the Envision 74, when it was released as a concept, I think is the only time in maybe automotive history, at least in my lifetime, where I saw literally no negative feedback. Almost everybody adored this thing and how cool it was and how revolutionary it made their brand look. It was like, oh look, like we're going into the future with some cyberpunk styling, but it'll actually be kind of usable. Unlike the Cybertruck, which has been revealed to be very janky, <laughs> so. But the 74 in the name is actually a callback to a car way back in the day. A concept from 1974 called the Pony Coupe. And you immediately see the relation. And while I was working with the Hyundai race team and doing some of their stuff for their YouTube channel, I asked some of their staff point blank to their face if they were going to build this car. I'm like, you need to build this car. You need to, please. And it was a perfect kind of opportunity to talk about it because they were like, so David, like, what do you think of Hyundai in the past five years? I'm like, I think it's great. Veloster N's great. Elantra N's great. Are you gonna build that 74 though? And all I got in response was a smirk. And that's all I got. They were like, can't talk about it. 
Sorry, but they were smiling the whole time they were talking about it, or trying not to talk about it, I guess. I think as a PR move, releasing this car would be the biggest win of Hyundai's brand in like a decade. Kind of think of it like the Ford Mustang GTD in a way. That car, even some of the most diehard bow tie people I know were like, all right, man, that's, that thing is still pretty cool. Especially since the car is rear-wheel drive. A lot of people are like, oh, wow, that's really neat that it's rear-wheel drive since the Elantra are in, the Veloster are in. Those cars are front-wheel drive, so a lot of people don't give them a chance. So the Vision 74, in a way, I think I'm starting to think more of like the GTD of Hyundai. But that's where the main problem kind of lies, is that I don't think there's going to be a lot of them. So... In theory, let's say the 74 goes into production. I think it has a few problems, unfortunately, at least on the surface. And we're gonna break them down right now. I think number one, I don't think there's gonna be too many of them. Or what made the Vision 74 so unique might not be a part of it either. So I do think if they do deliver on this car in 2026, it would be a huge, massive success to the brand's image, but I don't know about the car quite yet, and here's why. I think the power plant of this car is going to be the number one problem if they take the exact concept, philosophy, and bring it to production. It's just not practical. Even though it's a really neat idea and an engineering feat, it's just not practical. And to give you kind of a recap on how the Vision 74 concept work, this is how it works. It has two electric motors in the back, which actually act as the car's differential, which is really neat, which then is powered by a 62.4 kilowatt battery pack, which is then powered by a hydrogen fuel cell, which then acts as a generator for the extra range which gives the car a total of 670 horsepower. That's a lot. Does that sound practical for the average person who wants to go out and enjoy their sports car? Not really. For a limited one, maybe. As like a toy, maybe. But as somebody who wants to use it a lot, definitely not. Which will then in turn make this car a collector item which will rot in somebody's garage for years. And you and I don't want that. We wanna see these things on the street swagging down the road with their turbo fan wheels, right? I want to see the Vision 74s in the wild. I don't wanna see it as some dude walking through their warehouse and going, yeah, this is the 74, one of 10, but Like, I don't want that, man. I don't think you do either. I want it to be the new DeLorean. I don't see it happening due to the hydrogen aspect. Hydrogen in the United States, anyway, for a car, is a monumental pain in the butt to get. It's kind of like when EVs were first starting to surface and you couldn't find a charging station. So if you were stranded, you were out of luck. There is zero infrastructure. And as much as you and I want it to be a full combustion vehicle or even a hybrid system with a combustion motor, I don't think it's going to happen. For the design of it, it's just not very practical. I can definitely see this car being a 100% EV vehicle. It would make it easier for production, it'd be user friendly, and there's more infrastructure for it. It makes more sense. And you could take all the lessons learned from the Ionic 5 in and bring it to a two-door sports car. I'm open to that for sure. Absolutely. I think that'd be the perfect formula if you wanted to produce this more on the mass side of things than just like a limited edition. And you could absolutely get 670 horsepower out of an EV package nowadays. The technology has definitely caught up for that. I originally had a theory that they would use something like the six cylinder turbo out of the Genesis G70, or maybe along the lines of the Kia Stinger. That engine has a ton of potential. I drove one that made like 450 horsepower and it was a riot. It was a ton of fun. But like I said, it's more practical, probably production-wise, to just make it a 100% EV. It makes sense. Or, way out in left field, you put one of the old Genesis V8s in it. I mean, that would just be fun. That's a fun theory. <laughs> if this car goes hydrogen, I really don't think anybody 
would buy it. Even collectors would even kind of second guess it probably. Probably as a bragging right that it's a hydrogen powered sports car and then it would really sit around. I really don't see it being used like at all. And I keep making this comparison over and over again with the Ionic 5N. It has been proven that if you're able to engineer a way to trick the human brain to enjoy an EV similar, not 100%, but similar to a combustion vehicle with gearing and rev limiters and all that sort of thing, that is probably the best option. And the fact that their reviews were so phenomenally great for the Ionic 5N, that is a great sign. Also, Hyundai, if you're watching, just a quick little, you know, if uh, you want me to come drive the Envision 74 and make a video on it, I would fly across the world for that. If you'd like my racing resume, please let me know. Just a thought. <laughs> no matter the powertrain in this thing, I think the biggest loss of this car would be if they change the styling, especially if they nerf it or change it radically to not have the arrow on it or the turbo fan style wheels on it. If they just made it more of a normal-ish blocky car, I think it would lose a lot of its pizzazz per se. I think it needs the arrow. I think it needs all the ducks and the gills and the DeLorean styling. I think it needs all of that because you've brought an expectation to something and then if you bring it out and it doesn't have the big wing on it and it doesn't have all that stuff, maybe if there was like a base model version, or it's just like the normal everyday one and then you had the in version, then yeah, I would understand because then you could offer more trim packages, which in turn makes it easier to sell as a car for a mass production. And then if people want the crazy one, they could get it. But if there's no option for the aero and the cool wheels and just the aesthetic of it, that is a disservice to this concept, I feel like. Maybe even more than the FT1, because at least the FT1 sort of looks like the Supra. Man, that would be so tragic if this thing just ended up being kind of a blocky silver thing, like the Cybertruck. <laughs> you gotta keep those turbofan wheels, dog. What do you think in taking those off? You gotta have those. But they need to keep this car feeling special. If they don't do that, they've really messed up. I think the engineering design and everything with the hydrogen plant is incredible. I think that's a ton of talent, that's incredible development, but for use of right now, it doesn't make really any sense. As much as hydrogen is great with its benefits, it also has a lot of drawbacks. And as of right now, don't think it's the right time for it. Hyundai is on the way to be a very cool car company. I think they're becoming a bigger and bigger contender in Asia and just showing that South Korea is a main contender in the automotive space. I mean, compared to 20 years ago, wasn't even close. You're automatically going to Japan, but now there's more options out there. And the Envision 74, I think is a great example of imagination and letting engineers go wild makes your car company look good. It makes it look like you know how to have fun. And that's all I got to say about that. But what do you guys think about the Envision 74? Would love to hear it down in the comment section below. And on that note, I hope you all have a wonderful day and I appreciate every single one of you for stopping by. And I'll see you guys next time and take it easy. Have a wonderful day. Goodbye.